All right, guys, welcome to Hump Day RC with GB Linden and friends in the chat, of course. Thank you very much, Nate, off the top. Uh, appreciate that, my, my young friend. Uh, so tonight we've got a very special show. It's not the date of the release yesterday, but it's pretty darn close. So yesterday, Hobby King and Durafly officially released the micro tundra so there have been a ton of questions what's up guys thank you for the emojis thank you for all the excitement in the chat appreciate that a lot uh, we've got a lot to cover tonight i don't really have it scripted necessarily so everything i say and feel is off the cuff and it's my typical uh my goal is to be my typical very transparent and direct and blunt um, about my opinion about this plane and everything else that we talk about tonight frankly so uh yes cheers guniac pterodactyl kevin trappin thank you guys alan thank you man appreciate that right off the top we got got a few super chats i love that that loosens me up makes me feel better because frankly i was a little bit nervous before tonight's show because there's been, I've had this plane, the plane up at the top, up at the top for a very, very, what's up, George? What's up, Roy? For a very long time. And I made the videos that I did that I have uploaded in the last uh, 24, yeah, 24, 36 hours, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah, I think it's 24. Um, anyhow, I've had the plane for a while, and I had those sitting on the shelf for a while. I referred to this as my Black Ops plane, but never went into any detail. Didn't say the manufacturer, didn't say anything other than that I'd been working behind the scenes on a Black Ops plane. Now, and that could mean anything. Could be an SR-71, could be a civilian-style plane like this, RC Bush plane, whatever. And, uh, yeah, it's it's been exciting there's been some ups and downs uh, due to the wildfires uh, in Oregon in particular. Uh, the release was delayed, 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 delayed. And of course, no one really knew what was going on in the public eye, so it didn't impact the public, which is good, because you don't want to tell people it's an official date, like the, uh, the public, civilian population, that something's going to happen and then have it not happen. Now, uh yeah it's it's good to have stewart back at hobby king for certain uh he he to me him and and some of the others uh were in our hobby king right so if you don't have your your core personalities like that then then it's it's a problem so it seems like hobby king's rebuilding getting back on track i don't have any inside information they send me a plane once every like four months, if that, and they're usually in the hundred dollar range. So, I got the the P fifty one Mustang, this as well as the Ugly Stick, and they're fun. They're fun. They're little foam planes, inexpensive planes. So when I try to obje objectively look at a plane and review it and discuss it, um, I have to yeah, full circle for sure, Ryan. Um, I have to to consider the price point in, in the analysis, of course. But underneath this plane, and y'all hopefully got to watch my videos of the plane actually in action. So, And most of it, what there wasn't very much editing or anything like that. It was literally just 
clipping out camera fuzzes like always and uh, the unboxing nice tight and close got a lot of positive feedback about my unboxing um, not a lot of talking not a lot of fluff just to the point um, nice and close so you get to see exactly what you're getting in the box which is how I try and do it um, kind of a model for this um, this unboxing for this plane has been kind of a model for what I try and do with my unboxings um, tell you what you need to know uh, try and keep it objective and uh, let it with, it with a list of pros and cons and let you make the call on what is right for you because ultimately some people are gonna be satisfied with this plane some people aren't flat out some people aren't so you know you've got your uh, uh, folks that love to have like the the brand new uh, e1200 or v1200 sorry it's been a long day I've been fighting a migraine all week kind of low level ish sort of a thing so <laughs> thanks Spencer Keith I know man I don't have a jet the jet for you this week to talk about hey what's up Jeff's custom RC's um, so yeah it's not a jet it's it's not a high performance rocket it's it's not some of those things but I've got this box underneath here I've got a fresh one I'm gonna unbox for y'all tonight so it's it hopefully you guys will enjoy it and appreciate it and and I'll do my best to candidly answer any questions you guys have and just in advance because I know that I already saw right off the top uh, someone asking how does it compare to the E-Flight uh, Timber or Turbo Timber uh, of the UMX variety of course uh, it's it's just a different plane different foam different style uh, it's different but I do plan on doing a direct comparison video of them side by side and and giving my my uh, my feedback on those so I hope you guys like that so general hobbies you you said you thought I was flying those full-size no I was just on the camera that was while Bill Flynn uh, one of our favorite people on the channel and John VHRC and our buddy Todd so that that's who was flying in that video I was just on the camera I didn't have any planes the first float plane experience I ever had was flying this thing and that was a video I updated yes or um, uh, made live yesterday sorry I was distracted by Spencer Keith's comment there <laughs> oh man Okay, I'm curious now what they're all talking about. Nice. ADAS adapter dispenser Keith. Cool. What's up, Christy? All right, guys. I'm going to quick go down the members list. Thank you, RC Addict. I'm glad you liked it. I was I was super nervous. I had never flown on water before. And, uh, yeah, I ran into a snafu uh, with the water rudder. There was a lot of crap in in the water. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get into all that in more depth a little bit later, but yeah, I wish you were too KSM, but that's okay, man. You don't, you don't have to be a member to, to be appreciated and enjoy the show. So it's all free. You just get, if you're a member, you get like the, the members they got to see the, the super member and ultra members got to see the videos first several hours before. And yes, Roy, water is different, but I'm going to switch toggle here and do a quick rundown of the members because uh, my channel recently, because I did way too, I did too many uh, premieres back to back and then during a live show, absolutely cratered my legacy videos and the members, your guys' uh, monthly deals have made that smooth. I don't receive a lot of planes to review, so your guys' contributions on that consistent level with the memberships is extremely appreciated. And our very first member was Mr. Fiery Booty himself, Guniac33. Chuck GRC, check out his channel. 
He's got a bunch of surface stuff. He just keeps cranking those things out, which is awesome. Jermaine Spencer, my favorite chef. Dave Kluwitski, awesome, funny guy. Wild Bill Flynn. Uh, he's the mascot of this channel in a lot of ways, guys. He's, he's awesome. I love Bill. And he's going through some crap right now. So uh, think about it. Put him in your thoughts and prayers, all that stuff. Uh, Pterodactyl, thank you for being a member, my friend. Josh Weaver RC, thank you. George Watts, always a great supporter of the channel. Not just my channel, but everyone that's doing the live stream. So if you like live streams, um, especially the shows that are throughout the week, George Watts is and Fred Barron, those those two guys, very few people do more than them to su support the, the community in that regard. So Jet Tech Don Atkins, thank you, man. He's been commenting on my videos for this little plane, so that's awesome. Mark Z, very few people hit the like button on my GB Linden's RC Facebook page quicker than Mark Z, so thank you, sir. And if you're not, uh, you have not liked that page, do it, because I usually post a lot of stuff that uh, most people would find helpful. Um, like I post links when, when products are back in stock, things like that, as well as uh, videos generally right off the top it's one of the first places I post a video after I make it live. Uh, Flying Times, Mr. Or Mr. Tim, uh, who Kenny knows quite well. Good guy, funny guy, and uh, good pilot from what I understand. Mr. Pay It Forward, I call him Brad. Great guy, great supporter of the channel. Michael Reitzka, same thing I can say about him. F we're super funny guy. He's in the Zooms, Weekly Zooms. Dave Marshall's Weekly Zooms. And uh, awesome, great supporter. William Regita, what can I say? Another incredible supporter of the channel. Spencer Keith, funny guy, ball busting fella, loves his jets, doesn't like surface, good guy. And I always expect him to bust my balls at least a little bit. Kevin Trapman, incredible guy. Uh, you know, he's a lot like George Watts and uh, Fred Barron. He drops the super chats. Uh, very engaged, comments a lot on the videos, and uh, I appreciate him, man. Uh, Joe Pellegrino, awesome guy, uh, good supporter, been around for a while. Hamilton's Hangar. Guys, if you have not checked out his show, he comes on just before me each week, uh, about an hour or so before I come on live, maybe an hour and a half, I can't remember. Joseph Youngblood, another Zoomer on Friday nights, awesome guy, funny guy. Mickey B. RC, my bro from down under, Australian guy. Uh, he sent me a big old wine glass. Uh, if I drink out of that, I get a little too loosey goosey. So, trying to maintain for tonight. Be nice and, uh, as long as I don't have cotton mouth, that's kind of the goal of this whole thing. Mike SSI, another guy. You, there's so many of the members are some of my favorite people, just even without the memberships. Mike is hilarious, a good supporter of, of everyone. He's in lots of people's streams, so thank you, Mike SSI. Appreciate that, bro. Uh, Farmers RC Channel, he's been a member right from the beginning, too. Thank you. And David Martin Graff. Uh, or, and check out uh, the Farmers RC's channel on Friday nights. So um, It's always entertaining. You never know what he's going to say or do. And uh, kind of like Dave's RC that comes on a little bit after that. So check him out. David Martin Graf, uh, our newest member, uh, joined six days ago last week. And uh, thanks, guys. All right, that's the quick rundown, or not so quick rundown. I, I figured I'd add a little flavor to talk about uh, you guys that are members because I appreciate you. Really, this month in particular, you guys have saved my backside. That way I've got the cash flow to continue to to do what I do because my ad revenue is way down and some other things like that. So let me catch up in the chat. <laughs> Spencer Key. Bam, dude. Thank you for the super chat. And I'm mostly clapping and, and pumping for the hilarious comment, which I always expect. And yes, I was just trying to bust Ray's balls on that one, honestly, but you're right. You're not wrong. 
You are not wrong about that comment, dude. Gotcha, George. Okay, so those of you that don't have much experience or any experience with water landings, George Watts laid down some gold here. He says you have to nail landings on the water or your plane will flip over every time. Nose up is not an option. It's mandatory. It's fun. So, awesome, dude. Yeah, Christy, uh, Spencer got me on that one, didn't he? What's up, 2ERC? What's up, Bravo? What's up, EQ? What's up, Wreck and Roy's RC? Wreck and Roy's RC now owns a an F-35 with a fiery booty. And uh, I expect to be recording video of him flying his E-Flight Viper soon as well as, as the F-35 once he gets that down. And that's going to be awesome. Uh, we got Randy Huffins. He comes on at uh, pretty much after Mary Boozer's on Sunday evenings. I believe it's 6.30 PST, Pacific Standard Time. Correct me if I'm wrong. Randy, want to make sure that's right. Joe Habib, what's going on? Of course, Jeff's Custom RC. Him and Dustin had a good show last night. Lots of fun. Yeah, <laughs> Surface doesn't like him either. Of course, Pilot Ryan Media comes on Saturday nights at 6, 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, he's doing all the Horizon Hobby news stuff as well as Surface. So check him out. Uh, Noon's our, our Airborne RC. He's doing a lot of stuff too, some of the more expensive stuff. So check out his channel. Um, Bravo's RC Build Hanger, man. Um, yeah, you know what? Have they been taking out any RC streamers? That's my question. Um, if they're not, that's good. But that's also kind of why um, I, I don't really do giveaways as much as I'd like because it you're not supposed to on YouTube and people have lost their channels for that. Because frankly, if, if that was not a concern at all, I would do them far more often than I have. And that's all right. We'll get some stuff figured out one way or the other. And a lot of times I will contribute to other channels that are doing giveaways. So look for that moving forward. Okay, nice. You got So you got the F-35 bound up tonight. Nice. That will be awesome. Okay, so Randy says his show comes on at 8.30 Central Time on Sunday evenings, which is awesome. It's fun. I've been a guest on there, I think maybe twice. Yeah, KSM. And I do have a video of the, the Fiery Booty, me flying it uh, just before I sold it. And it looks cool. It's kind of a bright day. You can't see it as well as I'd like. Uh, the fan's a little out of balance. Nothing crazy, but... Um, I've been waiting to release the videos on this, so I wanted to pace myself, and the weather's been crap. It's been blowing and raining and doing things that we don't want to have happen when you're recording RC video, RC flights. So, trying to pace myself a little bit. That would be cool, Jeff. You will love that MIG, dude. John did his at night in the dark and uh, did it with everything stock. No new servos, anything like that. In fact, he has not even done uh, a, a flight with the new servos. So hope to get some flying in very soon. He's got a black ops plane himself. Maybe two, I can't remember. But yeah, we've, we've, if, you've not, if you're not subscribed to John VHRC, subscribe to him. I have not, what's up Jermaine? Welcome brother. Cheers, my friend. I think I might, uh, other than Colin Jermaine Chef, I might have to nickname him Mr. PayPal because he's, he's, he sends those to me more than anyone else. So I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, and, and guys, uh, speaking of that, Nate, I watched Nate put on uh, our do some fiery booty installs on uh, 
Mr. Guniak's show. He comes on on Mondays. And that is, I think it's 7.15 Pacific Standard Time that he comes on. Or those two come on, because they are a duo. Dy dynamic duo. Pretty, pretty uh, full of energy. Youthful energy. Yeah, KSM, those... Some of those planes are really not uh, for the budget friendly. But Jeff's right. Uh, save up. Save up. Uh, sometimes you're better off. Sometimes you're better off, uh, you know, building up to, to flight proficiency and then saving up for the, the planes that you actually really do want. That's what I'm doing been doing more and more lately because space is an absolute issue especially the deeper you get into it yeah candy man that's right thank you shay welcome dude good job on your show tonight by the way what's going on paul mcneil You know what, uh, KSM, I'm glad you brought up the Prime because a lot of times I'll do notes and then won't even look at them. So I will say there there actually are a couple things that were on, on Prime. Uh, one is the was the Duet Trainer. Then there's an Inductrix uh, deal. And I'm going to drop a link to my uh, Amazon store. So guys... You can pick up your Prime deals last minute because it's not quite done yet. There's some uh, uh, Kindle fires and things like that. So if you click on that link right there and then search anywhere in Amazon, uh, you help support the channel. It can buy you can buy anything. You can buy dog food, soap, uh, a tablet. Doesn't matter. Uh, after you click on that link. Uh, it, a very small commission comes to Mr. GB on what you buy, but the more people that do that, the more it helps me and helps keep me independent. That's okay, KSM. If 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 it doesn't work out, that's fine. If it does, I appreciate it. That's kind of how I look at it. Doesn't make or break me. Um, but over time, it does support me. In fact, I you guys sponsored the eFlight EC1500. It's not here yet, but I did order it with funds from the Amazon store. So those of you that have made purchases for the Amazon store in the past, or from the Amazon store in the past, um, that that was courtesy of you guys. It was a hundred bucks off. I couldn't, couldn't pass up that deal. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that I, I use a socket to tighten on the props and not go too tight but make sure it's to err on just a tough uh, touch, touch more than I would think. That's what Jason Merkel said in their video. Thank you, George. I appreciate it, dude. Man, you're awesome. Cheers, George. Thank you, George, uh, Ken Sprouse Jr. That that would be awesome, man. Uh, you know, Wild Bill Flynn buys everything he buys off of Amazon with that and he loves it and uh and it does not raise the price on anything it's it's I'm not sure how that works but uh if I buy anything off Amazon I click on John VHRC's Amazon store and it hasn't impacted pricing at all for me so John does the same for me so that's that's how we do it man and we support each other and just like everyone in the community does <laughs> Roy. Oh my gosh, Roy, you're so funny, dude. So Roy is saying, uh, nice Hamilton, another pose with uh, Ashley. Ashley, Shay's wife of Hamilton's hangar, has been posing with some of the planes and some of their screen caps. So Roy, Roy appreciates the ladies. There's no doubt about that. What's up, Matthew Smiley's Aviation? Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Hey, BST, what's going on? Timothy Nelson, excuse me, I can't remember if I welcome you tonight, but thank you, appreciate it. K 
Ken, I have ordered, so I, I talked in the members only stream, I think it was Sunday that I did. Uh, I was telling everyone how I spent most of Saturday busting my backside, uh, getting rid of boxes and things like that. And the reason being is because I've ordered so much stuff off of Amazon since this whole COVID thing happened. So what's up, Scotty GRC? And uh, yeah, so I, I know Amazon all too well. And uh, it's not a bad thing. For me, it's convenient. Yeah, I, David Martin Graf, I hope your DX9 does not experience any signal loss either. I can honestly say I've had exceptional luck with Spectrum. Um, I've got a DX6 and uh, uh, an IX12. I really haven't flown anything with IX12 yet. It's kind of been in the case. That's more of a an off-season sort of a deal. I still plan to fly year-round when I can, but sometimes indoor projects are, are mandatory, and I'm going to be doing some binding up some indoor quads, things like that. And, and if I crash them, big deal. And uh, I'll, I'll at least be able to, to do some testing with that and then, you know, kind of amplify it up. And after it's proven to be, to do well with, with like my little UMX Radian, things like that, that I can go out a little bit and not worry about it if it flies away. Big deal. I've had them for years. I'd re I'd replace a new UMX Radian, to be honest. Great, great little plane. But I want to make sure that it's good to go because my DX6 has been rock solid. The DX, uh, DX6i was rock solid as well. Yep, I understand, David Martin Graf. I had thought about uh, scaling up too. And uh, that's why I got the IX-12, so I could do safe if I so needed. But honestly, with most like EDF jets and things like that, I haven't had a need for it. Ha haven't even hasn't even crossed my mind that I want safe. Now, sometimes little prop planes, that's and, and my night radian, those two things. Oddly enough, I enjoy safe every once in a while. Like the more relaxing stuff, you flip into safe, and there's a little more margin for error there so to speak. Totally Ken Sprouse Jr. Uh, I've, I've noticed that either people have a passion for it. They have a passion for it one way or the other. Either they absolutely hate it or they absolutely love it. It's not really in the middle. So, uh, so far, I pretty much just need to get used to the interface, which is quite a bit different than than my DX6 which I'm very used to but I hated that at first so I'm not I'm not going to hate on the I, uh, the IX12 uh, because I'm trying not to be a hater these days it's easy to talk crap about things that make you uncomfortable and that might not be perfect so trying to mature in that regard not always easy especially when you review your but my goal is especially the last year or so, I've really tried to just be objective, not let my emotions get in there. Just be like, okay, here are the pros, here are the cons, and not get too whiny because there have been some times in the past where I've been pretty whiny, and I admit it. Paul, I would love to move out into the country, dude. I would absolutely love to move out in the country, and that's also why I have not got a new vehicle. I'm trying to save up money for a down payment on a house. Problem is, problem is, is uh, the cost of real estate where I live is like this. So, yeah, we'll 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 see what happens in the next year or two, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, that makes sense, Ken Sprouse Jr. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm more of an iPhone guy, but for work, I've got to use a droid. So, yeah, totally, Roy. Roy and I had that talk on, uh, on was it Saturday? Is that when you came up? 
It really is, George. It's uh, it's unfortunately crazy. Uh, and the jobs are like rescinding, which is insane. But that's that has nothing to do with RC. So we'll pull it back a little bit. Agreed. Definitely a buyer's market. So, guys, let me do check my list here really quick. And then we'll get into the unboxing of this because I'm sure that's why most of you are here. Um, cool, I did my shout outs. And uh, guys, GB Linens merch, it's available. I've got a merch shelf below every single video I have. So check out the store. I've got like, what, 25 items in there. And it, it runs the gamut, everything from tank tops to hoodies. I think I've got a hoodie as the pinned uh, merchandise in the chat. Um, Part of the reason I mentioned that as well, because there's a chance for you to get $50 worth of Teespring merchandise. Now what you do is you take a picture of yourself. A lot of you guys already have pictures of yourself with GB Linden's merch. Uh, dang, sorry Spencer. Uh, Spencer Keith sent me a picture of him wearing GB merch and uh, I did not prep it for the show. So I'm sorry, dude. Next week, we'll get you next week. Uh, but anyhow, so if you post it on Instagram and tag T Teespring and uh, put hashtag merch moment, hashtag contest on your post, you qualify for uh, getting $50 of merch. So that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, then you can buy $50 more worth of GP Linda's RC merch. Or any of the other guys that, that do their thing that have merch. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Frankly, I think it's pretty awesome that that us guys have merch. I've been at this thing for a long, long time. And I was waiting on a logo. And finally got... Uh, shout out to James at Motion RC, by the way. Got my logo. And uh, once that happened, man... Got my merch shelf, because I've been over 10,000 subs for a long, long time, so I qualified for the merch shelf. I uh, just didn't have a logo to to make merch with, so now I do. Yeah, Robert Ortlieb, it's crazy. Yeah. The, the real estate prices in this area is insane. Now, it's a beautiful place. We've got the ocean. Uh, the ocean, well, aka Birch Bay, is kind of a, a, a crap hole, so to speak. But we've got beautiful Mount Baker off to the side. You can see it from Vancouver and Surrey, of course, like you mentioned there. Surrey, Canada. And of course, uh, folks in California. Oh my goodness, the housing prices are even crazier there. But Alan Gentry. 20 acres of almonds. That's right, I think I remember you mentioning that. One of my good friends, his grandpa had an, an almond uh, farm, but he called they call them almonds because they're Dutch, so they call them almonds. So Joe Habib, I live in Linden, Washington, hence the Linden in GB Linden's RC, and then we've got Mount Baker. Sorry that everything is in reverse. We got Mount Baker right there. So in a lot of my videos, when I can, we try and get Mount Baker in the background and. It's a little bit of a, a signature of some of my videos and that's why I wanted to integrate that into the into the logo and of course I do jets and I've been doing warbirds forever and that's kind of how we came to that so no kidding Robert where are you living now Robert so if your uncle has a place in Birch Bay where are you living if your family's up here where are you living brother yeah, she, Mount Baker is an awesome site, Roy, indeed. And of course, Shay loves his jets. <laughs> George Watts. Yes, GB absolutely does sound for Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks is my boy, man. I, I really like Garth. Love his music. His music has gotten me through a lot of stuff, particularly when I was younger. The River, great song. If you hit a wall and you're you're not having a you don't have a good mindset, play that son of a bitch and it will help you get it, get you through some stuff. Believe me. Nice, George. 
I knew you had good taste, brother. All right, I'm going to do one more thing, and then we're going to get into the unboxing. And uh, we'll get a really good look at it, guys. So the other thing, and we'll probably talk about it more next week, on next week's show, because I want to make sure I've got content, quality content, good stuff that we can talk about each and every week without breaking the bank. That way I can reinvest properly into a new computer, uh, new stuff that comes up all the time. So, All right, guys, so I got my real flight 9.5, and I'm going to talk about it a lot next week, and it is forking awesome. That's my preliminary report on the real flight 9.5. Nice, Roy. That's very cool. Mount Rainier is a really nice mountain, too. I really like the, the, the way that Mount Baker looks, though. It's Rainier is more like this. Mount Baker is a little flatter. And then the twin sisters are off to the side over here, as you can see in a lot of my videos. What's up? Deuce is wild, a.k.a. Mike. Yeah, George, great reminder. So, guys, and and I, I bought that myself. I've not received or been sponsored by Horizon Hobby for anything. So everything I say about them is pure honest. Everything I say about everything is I try and be honest. However, 9.0, uh, 9.0 can be upgraded for free to 9.5. So if you own Real Flight 9.0, all you have to do is uh, log into it and do the update, and bang, you're good. And uh, that's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. So Matthew Smiley's Aviation Center. The ton how does the uh, Tundra compare to the UMX Timber? They're just different platforms. Um, I will get into that. I, like I said earlier in the show, I plan on doing a comparison, direct comparison, um, but I think for the show, at least for now, we'll do the unboxing and we'll talk about things and then I'll answer questions, of course. And if there are specific questions, like for example, does it have lights? No, this does not have lights. The UMX Timber does. So things like that we'll get into, but I'm going to, I'm going to get into it guys. Nice Roach Coach. Good to see you, dude. All right, so we're gonna get into the unboxing. I'm gonna move this down here. And water rudder, guys, pretty dang cool. If you did not watch my unboxing. And I probably won't be able to see the chat properly from here, but that's okay. I'll pop over there periodically. I, it's, this is so small I can pop it over here. So there are two different color options on it. One is the one that you just saw right or can see right down there. And the other is a more graffiti option they're calling that. Reminds me kind of of the, the H-King Flycat, that EDF jet, which is pretty fun. Um, all right, let's do this. guys let's see if I can get it to not blow out the camera I might have to keep it back here a bit let's see there we go maybe if I go like that all right guys so that's how it's packaged in the box packaged pretty nicely inside the box uh, as you can see we've got the the fuse the the Horizontal stabilizer is 
uh, built in. And uh, landing gear here floats underneath. And then the main, main wing is on the bottom. Got a prop with a chrome spinner. Pretty nice right there, if you ask me. And then we've got our wing struts and uh, fasteners for the floats, which the floats coming off and on on this thing is super quick, super easy. Uh, that probably is the thing that impressed me the most. You can switch between this landing gear and the floats probably about 30 seconds, realistically 30 seconds. And I take forever to, to change things like that. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So. Let's see. I'm going to carefully unbox the pieces. And I'm going to adjust the distance as needed. Uh, the whites, pure whites like this, sometimes blow out the camera. So keep that in mind if I adjust position. That's kind of what I'm looking at. I want to make sure you guys can see it because if it's blowing it out on a white plane, you're not going to see anything. This is the fuse. And of course, this is the same color as that. Um, I thought it was going to be the graffiti one, but uh, the person, the reason I got this sent to me is because the person that uh, was going to review it, this is a, a pre-production model. So there'll be a few things that are a little bit different than, than those of you that actually order it. Yeah, man. That, Yeah, it's a it's a it's a little strong for for my taste. Um, just like some UMX planes that I've talked about, complained about in videos in the past. So it looks good. So the 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 water rudder it comes with the water rudder as I mentioned earlier. Water rudder goes in there. Here's something that's pretty cool. Cow comes off. Get a nice look inside there. And since we're already in here, let's look closely. Now, Hobby King mentioned that that I could trim this off to get better access to the bay there and then adjust for CG easier. But the battery packs that I have, um, as long as I carefully pushed the ESC wires closer to the, the motor, um, I had plenty of space. I had plenty of space to do what I needed to do in there. Um, but if you do want to have more space, more access to where the receiver goes, you, you clip there, boom, 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 boom. But it's not needed, in my opinion. Because obviously you saw my flight videos, it flies fine like that. I did probably fly mine a touch nose heavier than most people. I did move it back just a little bit for... Um, for the float stuff, I probably should have kept it, in hindsight, probably should have kept it where it was at for the float stuff, but hey, uh, we learn about those little tweaks over time, and that's how it goes. I'm just catching up on the comments, guys. All right, so we're gonna go to the next piece. Put that right there. And I'm gonna try and carefully take these out. This is, this for you, those of you guys that have ordered this, uh, let me give you the heads up. Be very careful, at least the, the, the ones that, that I've got, uh, be very careful how you remove the floats. Um, the stickers on the side did stick to the, the, the foam, so. In fact, I'll show you on this one. I had to kind of reset them in there and uh, 
keep that in mind, guys. And I think they probably addressed it in the production ones, but again, these are pre-production, so. Yeah, it took off a little bit. It's stuck to the side of the box. I will be able to peel it off and then apply it just in case they didn't fix that. But I want you guys to be aware of that so you're prepared just in case that does happen. So, But the floats are awesome. Uh, you've got the, the little uh, receptacles for the wires to go in there. Literally push them in there and then slide them into the bottom parts of the fuse and it's that simple. It's just click and that's it. Yep, they do, Randy. That and, and that's one of the things to consider when you're looking at this or that. I think they're a little bit different because the, the bind and fly, it's all integrated. Here you need to buy a receiver, a six channel receiver, because this does have flaps. And we'll get to that in more detail here shortly. Thank you, George. I appreciate it. So yeah, this is what I used in mine. There is, uh, you know, you can get a, a six channel that has AS3X or a gyro, but I flew mine without a gyro. It doesn't come with a gyro like the, the P51, but it doesn't really... Uh, what do you mean, uh, Ray? Can you get to the RX? Oh, uh, n it depends. If you do surgery on this plastic part, probably. But for me, I mounted this uh, six-channel receiver. It's, it's the wireless one. I just mounted it on the side there, and, and it, it worked great. Once it's in there, I, you don't have to mess with it, at least the one that I got, so... Uh, but if you do want to access it, all you have to do is unscrew either of these wing struts and one screw on top and you've got access to it. So, Okay, cool. Ray, did you already order yours yet? I know I, th I th thought that I saw that, that you thought it was awesome, um, but I, I didn't know if you had ordered that yet or not. So, but yeah, a lemon, if it's, if it's comparable size to this, there's not a ton of room in the battery bay or the receiver bay. It's not super tight, but I'm not sure if you need a satellite or anything like that. So just know that there's not a terrible ton of space to do a lot of stuff. So. So that's how big, for reference, if you guys are looking at that. Uh, oh, perfect. No satellite needed. You're good. You'll be golden with that lemon then. Hey, KSM, we will, or KSM, we've got a local radio station called KISM. That's why I said that. Uh, I'll answer any qu miscellaneous questions like uh, that about the citation after we're done here the focus on this for right now is is of course this special unboxing which is pretty darn awesome yeah bush pilot that's a good point you can also uh it's scalable you can build a platform for a gyro there's there's a lot of things that you can do with this thing and and again if in comparison to the e-flight turbo timber Everything is integrated. It's already set up. It is what it is. And uh, you can put whatever receiver you want in here. If you're a Free Sky guy or an Open TX guy, you, you can fly this thing. Yes, Alan. That's, a, that's what this is. I'm left-handed, so let me put that right there so you can see it. And guys, I have this receiver in so many planes these days, and I link it in all of, I put the links to it to, on my Amazon store to every single video I do. 
sorry it won't fuzz or it'll won't focus that close but yeah man it's i love those i've got those in jets like my t33 and l39 big big jets down to uh that little uh h king p51 so exactly bravo they aren't expensive and they work great now one thing that uh jason from horizon hobby did say when he was talking to dave when he had rc air marshal on his show uh that now if you've got like a big 6s pack you're trying to put one of those in a tight space they need a little bit of space because the wire ones it does give you a little buffer whereas this one if you've got your esc wires in the battery all like around it you're not gonna you, your chance of having brownouts increase this is an amplified antenna though so as long as you have some buffer around it it's rock solid and i have had zero issues no hiccups at all and i've also got a pile of these ones too which is is the four channel amplified ones that are wireless so agreed alan a hundred percent man totally bravo you nailed it man ksm i would not for me for my money i have flown stuff with orange receivers in them but for my money spectrum all the way not even close one's a knockoff and one is the real deal so pretty pretty basic nice bravo i have the the 420 like right here in my little mig too and it works great it works great i can fly it as far away as i can see it That is cool, Dan Gonzalez. Yeah, those 630s are cool. They're cool. For me, though, uh, with the gyros, unless it comes with one already pre-tuned, I don't have any desire to mess with it because my OCD nature will, will make it so I become obsessed about the perfect tune instead of just flying and enjoying the plane. So I try and buffer myself for that. Oh, yeah, I bet, Bravo. Yeah, that Viper is not slow, and I cannot wait to see Wreck'em Roy's RC fly his Viper. And he put a fiery booty in his Viper, so Ray, that's going to be awesome, getting some video of that with Roy. Kind of like what we did with John with, uh, I think it was the MiG-17 and, uh, of course, the MiG-29. Yep, yep, absolutely. All right, guys, I'm going to keep this thing rolling. That way we don't stall it. Oh, so this is the plug. Let me snag the battery that it uses here really quick. I want to make sure that I cover this thoroughly um, and answer live any questions that you guys have. All right, so this is the pack. Sorry, I was upside down. So this is the pack that it uses. It is a high voltage 2S pack, and they're cheap. They're like, yeah, dude, they are, Spencer Keith. Keep my ears warm. Hey, what's up, Jason's RC Review? It has been a while. Welcome, my friend. You know what, uh, Tim Jostens, good question. I have not flown it without that. I know I mentioned I might do that in my unboxing, but I I tried to get every flight that I did on camera, and John VHRC is a busy, busy man, and I did not bring any other ones that are, are comparable with me. So I do plan on doing that in the future, though. So stay tuned i don't and i don't have any in this this weight 
with the red JST, I think that may have been another contributing factor to that. But uh, stay tuned. We'll see what happens. Yeah, Roy, I bought a whole slew of these things because I wanted to do a bunch of flights. And also, guys, guess what? I've got two more videos of this plane, of that one, that I have to upload. So I, I just need to edit them. You know what? I don't think that would quite be enough for the center of gravity to work out just fine, Jason. But it depends on the dimension. Ugh. So it would have to be the right weight and you'd have to position it just right to get the CG. And, uh, and let me see. Slide this in here, actually. How did I do that? So I had it about like so, and the CG was like, it felt good to me. I like it just a touch nose heavy. And I flew this thing in the wind uh, when I flew it off of wheels. It was, the wind was a little bit different. Yeah, uh, RC Air Marshal. It has, it's been cool. It's October, man. We got leaves blowing all over the place. Uh, people had their power go out throughout the county yesterday. The, the trees were whipping in the wind, man. They were dancing. So, yep, it's definitely getting cooler. Almost time to turn on the heat, but I am cheap, so I try and go as long as I can without having to turn on the heat. So it was 80 there where you are? Dang, dude. Yeah, it was in the 50s for the high temp, like Roy said. And it's been getting cold at night. <laughs> yeah, acorns bombing your car. It's, it's been a little bit crazy. Well, Bravo, I've got good news for you, my friend. We still have tank tops and t-shirts available in GB Linen's RC's merch store. So, Jeez, you guys. You guys having great weather, still flying weather probably, with the exception of the uh, hurricane or whatever, tropical storm that blew through there. Yeah, I'm always trying to go for the cross sell. Bravo. Uh, no shame in my game, right? All right, so. Here is the landing gear, nice fresh landing gear. I will, we will do, in fact, let's do it right now. So it's not a huge thing, but if you fly it off pavement, these wheels, the paint comes off pretty quick. Now the, the quick solution, the easy solution is just to touch it up with a Sharpie and you're good to go. But I wanted to show you guys the raw real deal because it looks amazing right out of the box. And this is literally just foam. So there's not much give. So when you land on pavement, you need to set up your approach nice and uh, do everything just right. The good news is, yeah, it is paint, Dave. Yep. It is paint, uh, but the good news is is the plane is durable. You can you can do things that would kill uh, my E flight UMX planes. So it's a tank. Yep, there you go, Roy. So yeah, and, and exactly. I'm just objectively telling all you guys what you need to know. That way you can prepare for having it. And it's a little springy too, so just so you guys know, so you guys are aware. 
Wow, Bravo, that's crazy. Six months. Man. That's awesome, Terror. I wish I was flying the last three mornings. It's, it's usually in the mornings and the evenings are great times to fly, but it's just been crazy around here. Yeah, Jeff Cole, I hope so too. Um, I haven't investigated that, but I've also been uh, quite busy. So I'm gonna put this back there. Yeah. I think I showed this earlier, but I'm going to show it again. Nice little prop with a chrome spinner. And it's got a little hole so you can really cinch it down with a screwdriver, which is great. There's no collet on this thing, which I'm not a fan of at all. It just bolts directly onto that, which I think is cool. Huge pro. And then in this pack, we've got the water rudder and then the itty bitty tail wheel, some screws to screw on the struts. And they're labeled well, uh, they're ease. And then one of the plastic pieces is just a little bit longer than the other. And that's how you figure out which end goes on either the fuse or the wing. Now we're getting down to the brass tacks with this wing right here. Roy, so you are liking the Roy likes uh, heavy shafts. Neat. All right, so that's what it looks like. Uh, looking in the camera does not do this green justice. It's actually a really nice looking green. Um, and we've got some nice servos on this deal. We've got flaps. And I really, I'm not sure if it will show. I show this nice, uh, do a good job of showing this in my unboxing for it. But we've got these, yeah, it's, there we go. It's showing the opposite, so. We've got heavy duty linkages on the, the control surfaces or the heavy duty linkages on the servo linkages that connect with it. We've got brass on this thing, in other words. So it screws down, screws down with a screw and brass fitting. <laughs> Dave, Dave, you're hilarious, man. Oh. I've got a comment uh, I'll send you in Facebook or I'll bring up in Zoom later this week. Tonight I'm, I'm trying to keep it a little more general audience, but that is funny, dude. Kenny, they sent me two. Because they wanted me to feature it on the live stream, so... Uh, like to do an unboxing. That way you guys can see everything because you're a more captive audience, right? And uh, it adds value. So that is why I'm doing that now. One thing I do want to point out, other than that these servos are very nice and the linkages are top notch. I have, guys, these linkages, the way that these connect and the servos on a UMX style plane, a micro plane, is pretty dang impressive, I have to say. 
So, yeah. But what I was going to say is that uh, these connectors, the setup will be, a, my understanding is, though it'll be a little bit different for those that are production models. Again, both of these are pre-production models, so I know that there are refinements based on uh, feedback from folks like me, because I, I did give feedback on the things that I've mentioned that are, aren't perfect. And I'm pretty sure that they, they made some changes. So I'd be surprised if they didn't. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Kenny. Oh, man. On, on a side note, speaking to Kenny, I actually sent uh, uh, him a Facebook message the other night because what, it was last week's show and then maybe the show before, like back-to-back -back shows. For me, I, I was doing it playfully. But I, I wanted to check and make sure that he knew that I was just, just busting his chops in a playful, entertaining way uh, to hopefully support his show. And, and he's the best sport in RC, man. You can, you, can, you can say anything and he laughs. He goes along with it. He gets the spirit of it. So shout out to Kenny. His show, Thursday nights, it, all night. He goes all night on his show. Hanger 51, that's who Kenny is. And, uh, yeah, dude. Totally, Jeff. Just in case I, I destroyed stuff. that They're hedging their bet for sure, man. All right, so back, back to this. Any questions about the wing, guys? Any questions at all? All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to move these parts and pieces off to the side because I do not do a good job of assembling things live. That's not my forte. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out the, the big uh, Tundra. That way you can do, I'll show a comparison, a size comparison. Because when I did the actual unboxing of this, I did not have, I don't even think I had my V2, much less even be like together. So, Roy, I think it, it might have a hard time fitting in your Ford Flex, but... If you angle it just right, you'll probably be okay. Jeff Cole, uh, putting slats on the UMX uh, timber, you shouldn't need them. Mine is pretty darn tame. I would check your center of gravity and, and your settings. Hey, uh, Scott Butt. It is a little bit heavy for its size, but look at that thickness of that wing. This thing is an absolute tank. It flies a little bit heavier um, than, than some other stuff. So the wing loading is a little bit higher, especially with this, this heavier pack. This pack is not terribly light either. Um, the only time that I really felt that is when I had the floats. Because with the floats, you've got the extra drag. So that's a consideration, something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, so I hope that answers that question. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, Dave. Marshall, there we go front look at the thickness and then the back look of course it's a lot thinner on the back side because it's like semi symmetrical foil and it's got a little uh, curve in there which is kind of cool nice touch it's it's pretty fun Ray I gotta say gotta say now I will also well let me let me bring out the the big tundra and then do that size comparison, and then I'll talk about the flight characteristics in a little bit more detail.
All right, so that's that's the full size deal. Light in the background messes things up a little bit, so. So that's kind of the size comparison, guys. All right, let me check one thing and then we'll dive into the flight characteristics of this guy. All right, so um, it definitely flies uh, scale, so it's not overpowered. Uh, I'd say, just as a, a comparison, the Ultra Micro Turbo Timber definitely has more power. Uh, it does not. It's it does loops, but it doesn't do them terribly great. Uh, can do some mild aerobatics. Definitely do nice tight aileron rolls. I, I like those with that. Um, can do some knife edges, inverted flight, stuff like that. But it's it's not an aerobatic phenom like like the the E Flight Turbo Timber, to be honest. So that's basically what I want you guys to know about the flight characteristics. It's a fun little plane to bash around, and. Uh, I have enjoyed flying it, but I was it's not overpowered. So if you're someone that wants to have, um, yeah, so Skippy, welcome, dude. So if you want to have uh, one that's super powerful, you're either going to need to to get a different motor and ESE potentially, or or go with something different. But if you want something that's tough and durable. Uh, that's not a bad way to go. If you plan on, on crashing and having rough landings, not a bad way to go. Great question, RC Addict. I prefer the landing gear. I think it looks super cool on the water. And also, I have to be honest, I think the, the water level and the snags and things like that, um, made it a little bit less enjoyable if the water level would have been higher and there would have been less things for the water rudder to get caught on things and floats for that matter to get caught on i think i would have enjoyed the float flying more but on the landing gear itself with the wheels yeah the it was that's that's the way that i prefer to do it and i did that on that day it was pretty windy out so yeah, the floats are cool, and it comes with it in the box, guys. So, you know, there's... People have asked throughout the show, how does it compare to the E-Flight Turbo Timber? They're just apples to oranges. They're the similar size, but I think they're kind of a different different class. One's bind and fly, one's plug and play. Uh, yeah, one, one has the, the high voltage, and one doesn't. And uh, one comes with floats, one doesn't. One has lights, one doesn't. So, yeah, Roy, and the, the water level has gone up since that. So I did the videos, like I said earlier in the show, quite a while ago. It was a good month, at least, since I did that. So, thank you, George. I appreciate your support at Super Chat always comes in handy, so thank you. Yep, Roy, uh, floats. So my, my Tundra V2, which I hope to be flying this weekend. Saturday looks kind of rainy. Sunday, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I'll be able to fly that, and I'll probably bring the little guy with me. We'll see what happens with that. And I've got a ton of these packs right here. So if it all turns out, I will be flying both probably, so... That's cool, Bravo. 
very cool especially if you can get them light enough I would think that uh, a ski especially going into the winter time would be be a nice application for printing and speaking of skis I plan on weather permitting all that stuff but I got the EC 1500 coming and it comes with the skis so I've got a couple places that I could fly that and it's also a stall plane with plenty of power so that could be a lot of fun yeah Roy fingers crossed for the nice weather would be awesome Okay, that makes sense, Bravo. Yeah. Actually, let me make sure. There you go, Bravo. That makes sense, dude. Oh, so one other really important thing, at least to me, something I'm very proud of. Not next week's show, but the week after, it'll be... 52 shows in a row, guys. I have not missed one show. Even when I have not felt well in the last year, I still went live. And I'm pretty proud of that. And and when I say I went live, like I'm not talking about a premiere taking my, my place. I did my show. So that is pretty darn awesome. And, and I'm happy. And frankly, I would not do it without the support of you guys because... Uh, the interaction and engagement uh, with you guys is fun. I look forward to it. Even if I'm not feeling well or I'm nervous, like, oh, what am I going to talk about on this show? It always, you guys are always there to help me drive it forward. And then you top it off with the, the, the cherry and the whipping cream with the memberships and the super chats. It's just like, man, it's so awesome. Appreciate it. Oh, Christy, that is hilarious. What was... What about my abs? I, I, I don't understand. Thank you, RC Addict. Thank you, 200 Driver. And thank you, Scott a Butt. Scott a Bot, sorry. Scott a Bot. <laughs> Did not mean to miss, miss say that. It's been a long, long week. I slept like crap on Sunday night. Slept like crap on... Monday night and then last night it was better but uh, it's been been a long week thank you great Scott appreciate it all right guys so now at this point I'll pretty much talk about what I want to talk about with the brand new Durafly micro tundra pretty cool little plane there are any questions about anything RC related, drop them in the chat. Yeah, could be Randy. Could be wine deficient, man. I may need to fix that. I need to fix that. No, I've, and, and hey, that may even be partly that. I've been this week. I've been been better with that. So maybe I need to to go a little harder. I guess. Hi, Chris Mir Oscobar. Welcome. Welcome to Hump Day RC with GB Linden. Do you have any questions about RC, Chris Mir? Chris Mar? Sorry if I mispronounced that. Once I'm talking for a bit, whether it's water or wine, my mouth just kind of gets tired. Oh yeah, on the, the the Tundra V2, absolutely. Yeah, that's a cool plane, man. And that's one other thing that I do want to say about the Micro. It's a V1, so uh, they made some huge enhancements, at least in my opinion. On the the V1 was a great one, great plane with the Tundra, but on the V2 they added vortex generators. 
they 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 elevated things so oh boy jason that's that's pretty weird man have you have you disconnected your battery yet like shut it down and then disconnected your battery and just kind of let it sit for a bit let all that cache memory go out of it that's what i would do um do you by chance have a back did you make a backup of all your models prior to that that's another question i have for you that is a great question jeff i do not know um i know that that part of the reason why that release date kept getting pushed back was due to the wildfires and stuff going on here at the organ organ warehouse but i'm not sure i'm not privy to any of those details they just told me um it's going live and didn't even tell me a specific hour when it was going live so i had to wake up to see in pilot robert in captain Bloss's video already live more than an hour than than when i had seen it so I had a little catching up to do. So if you guys have not watched my flight videos, please do that to help me try and catch up because yeah, they also sent their unboxing out in an e-blast and I thought mine was better to be honest, but they, they're they funny, they're great guys. And on, honestly, man, if I ever got a chance to fly with those guys one day, I would be very happy because they are, they're fun and they're good guys, they're good guys. I appreciate that, Roy. I'm glad that, that you were the first that I saw. Oh, okay. So how many models do you have programmed into your radio, Jason? I guess that's the other question. Yeah, Randy. If you don't, if you don't love Robert and Blas, then you don't have a sense of humor. That's my. It really is the comedy of R. C. Allen, and uh, they're they're funny guys, good dudes. And Pilot Robert, back when he had like four or five hundred subscribers, maybe even less, um, he's commented on my videos from that time on up to his superstardom in R. C. So. Wow, Bill Flynn, what's up, dude? Bam. Welcome, guys. I was talking about Wild Bill Flynn earlier in the show. I'm glad to have him check in here. I know a lot of times he listens in off to the side. Um, but it's always good to have him in here, have him chime in so we can say hi to him. <laughs> uh, bye, Paul. Uh, Chiang Mai, that's not really how my live stream works. Usually people give me the $10 uh, to help me, to help support me so I can continue to, to buy planes, review them, and remain independent so I can, without worry, deliver the actual factual information and not have to suck up the companies to, to do stuff. On occasion, I will receive stuff to review. But uh, I work for you guys. I do not work for any company. And, and that's why I say in my uh, affiliate link disclosure that clicking on those links helps keep me independent. So I can tell you exactly how it is. And uh, yeah, that's, that's how I roll. Fred Barron! Bam! Welcome, welcome. Dude, ask any question you want. Fred about uh, this beautiful little guy I unboxed it already unfortunately but I've got the parts and pieces and the fuse in the wing all over here and I know you really don't do micros or at least it doesn't seem like you do micros so this probably isn't your flavor anyway but I will answer any question you have man Guys, if you have not checked out Fred Barron's 
YouTube channel, do it. He's got some of the best music accompanying his RC videos uh, than, than anyone, really. And he supports everyone in the community that, that works their butt off like I do. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, dude. Drop the link to your new website, man. <laughs> to totally. N now he wants a $5 redeem code. That's hilarious. What's up, Adam Hampton? Bam! What's going on, dude? Yeah, guys, click on, on... If you have ever been interested in having an afterburner unit, a top quality afterburner unit in your EDF jet, raise your guy. He just dropped the link to his... Uh, his his website the one that his lovely wife just built she did a great job she was on the show on Ray's show on Monday evening so uh, uh, by pull I can certainly give you a discount to my merch store uh, just uh, <laughs> thank you Randy Nice, Adam. So, did you which one? Which one are you talking about? Are you talking about uh, the the big one or the little one or both? And I'm glad you made it, man. And I'm glad you were jamming last night too. That's cool. I I'm glad you're able. Okay, the the micro, yeah, man. And so I've got the parts and pieces all around here. If if you uh, if you want me to show you the stuff, I'm happy to do that, man. You got it, Randy. Thank you, dude. And thank you, Miller RC. Thank you for dropping by. Yeah, and that's what I figured. I figured it was it was work, but it's also fun work. Like you're a professional musician. That is is awesome. I wish I had that talent. All right, thank you, Tara. Thanks for joining joining us, and thank you for your continued support, brother. Really appreciate that. And we'll definitely see you tomorrow night in uh, Kenny's show. Controlled Chaos RC, what's up, man? You, you bought the new Micro CA? Or is it the, the micro tundra? That makes sense, Bravo. That makes sense, man. see something here real quick stand by guys I'm doing a quick little little something something here nice nice Good question, Miller, and no problem, man, uh, on on the typo control chaos RC. I just wanted to make sure that I understood correctly. So it takes these uh, little high voltage packs, these bolts. They're kind of cool. I bought a bunch of them, and uh, uh, I I think they're like seven bucks each. And I've got the link in the description to the exact one that I've got right here. And it also does give me a little bit of an affiliate boost, but but really, uh, uh, you can find them on Hobby King too. But if you click on the link, it'll take you exactly to this specific one. It is the Bolt 500 
7.6 volt Turnigy battery. And uh, there you go. And it's got the, the red JST. I have not tried it on 3S. They don't recommend 3S, so maybe, maybe not. Nice, Nate. Yeah, dude, do those final tweaks. Make sure, sure it's ready to go. That's that's a huge investment, so I wish you well on that maiden, and uh, I'm sure I'll see some awesome Instagram footage with you doing that. Yeah, I hear you. I, yeah. I do know that someone, I think I saw someone, one of the reviewers, did not use the high voltage. I didn't watch the actual video, but I saw somewhere that someone was uh, not using the high voltage, and they probably did okay. Not positive, but... Yeah, Fred, I'm sure his maiden will be magnificent. Nate is an excellent, excellent pilot. And uh, one day when I grow up, I hope to be as good as him on the sticks. There you go, controlled chaos RC. I would caution you, um, fly it off the ground first. With floats, there is a lot of drag. So I would make sure that you have the high voltage packs if you do try and fly it off of floats. Because like I said, there, there is some, some drag there. Me? Sarcasm? No way, bravo. <laughs> no kidding, Tim Johnson. Okay, well, there we go. Yeah, they they uh, uh, sent me one of these, but like I said, I had that plane so far in advance, I thought, well, man, I, I want to make sure I'm prepared when I do get out and fly, because I don't get to get out and fly with camera person very often. And I stocked up on batteries. I think I ordered like five of these in addition to the one that I already had. So lots of them. You're welcome, Controlled Chaos RC. And heck, if, if uh, a 300 milliamp WA, that's the regular LiPo, which is going to be lighter than this, that might be okay on floats. But I don't know. I, I really don't know. Yeah, Miller, it's, it's just one of those things. It's... Uh, I was also in a very uh, small space to do that. So, and part of that was on this guy right here. So, you, you combine the, the inexperience on the water, uh, me trying to force it, if you will, trying to, to take off and land into the wind direction. And then once I got it in the air, those plants were like in my face. So, I kind of, you know, hooked it to the side a little bit and leveled off and uh yeah so that that's that's how it was yeah and keep me posted guys i want to know your feedback because there are instances where i've had great luck have a good night alan thank you for the super chat brother appreciate it uh, there have been instances where I had great luck with a plane and other people didn't. And times when I didn't have good luck with a plane and other people had fantastic luck. So, you know, these things are manufactured on a production line and they're not all equal. Sometimes they have more glue, less glue. Their CG is a little bit different, especially on the little guys. Like, I've owned a million of those little UMX planes and ultra micro planes. And there's a lot of variation between some guy that I'm talking to on RC group and the one that I had, like the UMX B17. Some of those flew okay with that little 250 milliamp hour uh, 1S LiPo. I had to get a 600 or at the minimum a 550 with enough weight in the nose for it to fly without wanting to go up like this. So there's 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 a lot a lot of variation and and it's good to know. 
And exactly, David Martin Graf. Those CGs are, are huge. So um, your guys' CG with this might be a little bit different than mine due to, because this is pre-production. So yours might be a little bit different. Your mileage may vary. So uh, make sure there, what I try and do is make sure that there's some grass nearby. If I have to bail, if things are not, not right, um, I can land in the grass or do a controlled crash in the grass rather than pancake it into pavement you nose in on pavement i don't care what planet it is it's probably done yeah totally roy totally and uh and the one that you have the 500 works great for me i need the 600 like the nanotech 600 that has enough mass to to do fine and, and help it make it so if any wind's blowing that I can actually control it. Yeah, it's significantly underpowered that UMX B-17. But it's a cool concept and it looks so cool. I, I would like them to come out with using those little brushless motors that they used on the Ultrix. Use that on the B-17. Four of those little guys. That thing will be a rocket. And the EC1500 seems to be a success. So if they kind of have that idea in their heads for that, a high performance B17, the, sale guy, the scale guys can obviously use throttle control and, and fly at scale. But everyone else that wants to tear up the sky could do that too. So what's going on, Jeff in lower Alabama? Welcome, my friend. Good to see you. And by the way, I know that you had mentioned adding slats to your uh, E-Flight Night Timber X, and I plan on doing that. I plan on doing that. In fact, I even pulled off one of the tabs that was going to do that, but I wanted to check and see if, if CA glue was needed or not, because it seemed like those plastic pieces go pretty deep into the wing. So, um, But I never went back and uh, did that. So, But I will do that soon. That is my plan anyway. Oh yeah. Yeah, Sasha, what's going on, man? Welcome. Uh, you know, I, I I recognize the name and it's also really close to the name of my buddy Odell who uh, has flown many legendary videos on my channel. He's got several legendary videos on my channel anyway the F-14 flights, and then the 90 millimeter F-16 videos, which have been wildly successful on this channel. So successful, in fact, that Chinese companies have stolen the dang thing, so. Sorry, I got a funny Facebook message. Distract me a little bit. Okay, cool. So, uh, uh, Jeff, uh, I appreciate that mention. And here's the cool thing about the Real Flight Nine. I'll just touch on it. I'm not going to go into. I'm not going to steal the content for next week's show, but or at least part of it. Uh, I flew the Night Timber X. You've got the option with or without out slats. So I got to try it, and it did seem a little bit more stable. It didn't seem to snap quite as much as as it does without the slats, at least on the sim. So, ha! <laughs> totally, Dave. Totally. And and guys, I did report them. Yeah, Adam. It is available to the public. In fact. I'm going to drop a link so you can check it out. You don't have to buy it, but it is an affiliate link, guys, if you want to help support the channel. Bam, right there. It's got all the cool new releases from Horizon Hobby. And and short of, of uh, being you know one of the influencers for Horizon Hobby, uh, that's the best way for me to at least try the stuff I know the Sims are always a, a little bit different, but it at least gives you a general idea of what to expect. So 
I think a day. I think. Oh, so Adam, you did you end up getting real flight nine? If you have real flight nine, all you have to do is upgrade it. But I thought you had uh, like the seven point five or seven. Yeah, dude, that's cool. Do it. Hook it up. Hook it up. Oh, yeah, Control Chaos. Um, so let's, let me just grab the hell did that go? Let me grab a tape measure. Or I can just look at it. So it says 6 by 4 P. That's that's the size of the prop, and it's it's a light little guy. And I saw someone on RC groups say that they would like to have the prop be uh, like this one, with the carbon fiber and all that stuff. But I I think the weight would be if they were to do it up all nice like that, the weight would be probably be more than this, and on. UMX or micro planes, the smaller the plane, the more every even fraction of a gram count. So I'm pretty sure that uh, that was that was the thinking behind that. Just a guess, no one told me from Hobby King, but that's my thought. Dave, I wouldn't mind being trained by David Merkel. That dude He's a savage on the sticks. Absolute savage. That's awesome, Randy. Yeah, the, the update should be easy. All you got to do is uh, get online. and In fact, guys, if, if you guys want to get on and do a little sim time, I'm game. I'm certainly game. Oh, okay, Controlled Chaos RC. I understand. Yeah, I'm glad that I could get that information for you, and I'm really glad that it's a universal size. Oh, so there is the training simulation with Jason. Wow, that's cool. I got to try that. Got to try that. Nice, Nate. Yeah, dude, you're clearly sharp on the sticks, man. Fred, Baron, when you say it was you, what do you mean, man? I, I, I must have missed something. Oh yeah, Adam, definitely Dana will love it cuz I've got the I've got this right here. That's what I was using before, and it's still nice. But the radio is so much better. Uh just everything just seems crisper and tighter and better. Yeah, I, I know, Dave, but I'm not sure what context. Okay, yeah, man. Definitely, Adam, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely have to do that. Gee, bro, what's up? Welcome, my friend. Ricky the Photon is in here. We're, we're getting, some, getting some folks in here checking things out. I like it. And thank you for, for everyone liking. We got 56 likes so far. Uh, $49 in chat revenue, a.k.a. Super Chat. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate that. Still 45 people in here this deep into the show. And that's awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys.
Oh, nice, Fred. Nice. For some reason, it's not... Well, shoot, I didn't see it, but thank you, Fred. I appreciate it, man. That means you're going to be looking good. Which color did you get? Well, I'm going to guess black. Yeah, we call got to call uh, uh, Captain Photon Mr. Colorado these days. Nice, Fred. Thank you, dude. Yeah, I was talking earlier in the show how you and George Watts are just the biggest supporters of the RC community. Everyone, everyone that does the streaming, and I'm not sure I'd be here two shows away, like, not next week, but the week after. It'll be 52, a full year of shows, which is nuts. And the first one that happened was I just, you know, tested the, the camera that Dustin sent me, Mr. Skippy, and uh, you, you super chatted me. And boy, I was hooked from that point on to these live streams. And of course, you know, I'm, I joined the, the chat on most of them, but cheers to you, brother. And, and it's so awesome to have Fred Barron in the Zoom things on Friday nights. I love it. It's so awesome. This community's awesome. Yeah. Bam. That's right. Absolutely. It's always fun, and uh, Fred and and those of you that do join the zooms get to see the unfiltered GB, no uh, no corporate GB, like I've tried to be relatively tonight. Try to do relaxed corporate GB anyway. Fred is quiet, but when he speaks up, we listen. We listen, and and. Uh, psh and psh, we do all those us, us older guys we don't we know that we know how to communicate on a certain level you'll learn one day Nate one day uh Dave Martin Graff yes and David's been in there too so RC Air Marshall is for the guys that do Zoom Guys and gals, I think it's mostly just guys, though. Um, everyone needs to be ready for the Discord switch this Friday. What the hell does that mean, Dave? We are freaks, Captain Photon. Without a doubt, my friend. My girlfriend's just sent me a message, so. She just got to her friend's house a few minutes ago, so. I told her, I'm, I'm still live, so no problem. Jermaine, what's up, man? Welcome back. Or if you've been in, you've been kind of quiet off to the side. We'd be super freak, freaks if you were in there, Roy. No 200 driver. No, she lives here, man. She lives with me. If if that that were true, that that that's not good. I don't disagree, uh, RC Air Marshal. 
Zoom making you approve everyone is not cool at all. Hey, thank you, JCB67. I didn't even know you are in here, man. Thank you for joining the show. Have a good night, and we'll see you uh, in the chats throughout the week. Oh, wow. Thanks, Nate. Appreciate it. Bookends with the Super Chats. Appreciate that, dude. Guys, if you missed the first part of the show, Nate gave me a similar Super Chat right in the very beginning to kick things off. So that is awesome and appreciated, dude. <laughs> Bullethead. I never... So that is that your nickname for him? That's awesome. And, and David Martin Graff, you're right, man. Uh, the repetition is, is, is critical and doing things correctly over time, which means that I'm, I'm going to have Jason Merkel uh, teach me some stuff. No doubt about that. Yeah, and Dave, I'm going to ping you on uh, Facebook Messenger, so I've never used Discord, so I've got no clue how that works. So uh, hopefully I'll be a quick study, and then we'll have fun, just like we do in Zoom. <laughs> Fred, yeah, that's exactly right. Roy kind of is, although he's he's also like like the 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 creepy uncle all at the same time. That's good, Dave. Hey Nate, uh, did your sister see any of Roy's comments? Yeah, David Martin Graff, uh, Kenny does. Hanger fifty one, he goes all night long. He literally goes all night long. He starts at about 6 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock, somewhere like that, sometime like that, and uh, goes until... And that, that 6 o'clock time frame is Pacific Standard Time. Sounds good, Nate. Sounds good. Yeah, they last all night. So what happens is when I get off of work... I'll uh, kind of tune in, check it out, and uh, see what's on the agenda, and then I'll pop out for a couple hours, and then when I eat, I usually turn it on and kind of see what's going on, and then I take a shower, and then as I'm going to bed, I kind of bust up in the chat a little bit, and then, then go to bed, so kind of ritual. Yeah, totally, Nate. That 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 the political stuff um, is never good. It's all about RC. It's not about the political stuff. The political stuff is everywhere. So, but you know, apparently she's young and passionate, and I get it. You're not wrong. And and factor in the silence between the the leg too. That there's there's some of that as well. But Kenny Kenny he kind of grows on you kind of like a fungus. And 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 one that that you don't want to wash off basically. Night Germain. You get a salute and a, and, a, and a wine toast all at the same time. All right, Night Miller RC. Give you that too. All right, guys. I th hey, hey, there's Kenny. There's Kenny.
definitely not a DVR camera. Maybe, maybe with with the landing gear, the wheels, yes. I think it could easily take this. And if you shave off a few grams with going with a little bit lighter pack, if a non-high voltage lighter pack works like apparently Hobby King did, uh, then yes, absolutely. I think you can do that with ease. Um, I, do, I do. I need to FPV more. My fat sharks have just been kind of sitting there doing nothing for way too long. I haven't flown this in forever either, which is nuts. All right, Nate. Have a good night, brother. Thanks for the support. Appreciate it, my friend. All right, guys. Do we have any other questions before I wrap things up for tonight? Still got 40 people in here, which is, which is awesome. Um, I want to make sure I answer any other questions um, that I can about this little plane, that plane, or anything else RC related that I can help with. If I don't know, I'll tell you that. But if I do, I'll try and help. All right, night, Ray. Have a good night, brother. And I'm glad you like those emojis, too. Night, RC Attic. That could be fun, Dave. Yeah, man. Control Chaos RC. Uh, it really depends what you want out of it. For me, um, as a daytime flyer, uh, that's going to be a fun little basher that I can can beat up, and uh, it's it's just thicker, more durable. Uh, if I want to fly at night or dusk or in the early evening, the E-Flight Ultra Ton, uh, E-Flight Turbo Timber is is definitely the choice because it's got lights. So the lights is a differentiating factor for me when I would want to fly it. I'm glad I have both, so I don't really have to make the choice. Thank you, Jeff in LA. Appreciate it, brother. So yeah, I hope that answers your question, uh, Control Chaos RC. If there's anything specific you want me to, to, to compare about the two, let me know in the chat. Um, and then we'll, we'll uh, see, I'll do my best to answer the question. Because just broad stroke, it's, it's really kind of hard to com compare them. Because I haven't flown the, UM, I've got the UMX Turbo Timber off to the side in the box. It's one of my favorite planes, period, so. It's going to be really hard for any plane to stack up well against it. Um, that's true, David Martin Graf. Yeah, that's and safe is is a tool that. Sorry for bumping camera. Uh, I wish there was more space between the the structure of this thing and where my leg goes i'll pull this out a little bit more there we go uh but yeah safe as a tool <laughs> dave 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 <laughs> oh my goodness you're funny uh but yeah uh i have not flown the turbo timber on floats so i think it's only fair for me to compare them on the wheels. Yeah, good question. You, I don't think you were here earlier when I was showing that. So I use the the AR six hundred and twenty. It requires a six channel uh, receiver because it does have f full functioning flaps, which is quite awesome. Mickey B R C in the house. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, I, I bet it is, Dave, but I haven't done it, so I can only talk about, in comparison, 
having feeling both on the sticks. But yeah, the UMX Turbo Timber is an incredible plane. So um, it's like I said, it's one of my favorite planes. So it's tough for any plane to compare across the board favorably with that plane. So um, now, if I were to have to to pick between uh, this guy. And the UMX Turbo Timber, the UMX Turbo Timber wins hands down. Not to, for those of you that that uh, hung on this long in the stream, you deserve to hear that. I do plan on doing a side by side comparison video, um, as time permits. And uh, there you go. Yeah, it does fly heavier. The wing loading is much lighter on um, on the UMX Turbo Timber, but this one it's this one's thicker. It's got the EPO foam, so it's got like the big big boy uh, Park Flyer size foam. So it is it is just more durable. Like I had a rough crash. Yeah, man, these are, Fred, these are great, great deals. But I did have a crash on this thing that would have literally killed any UMX plane I would have had. And it was me operating on floats with lack of experience. So it did a little bit of damage to this. And I had to adjust the trim a little bit on it. Um, but it would have absolutely crushed in the wing on any other plane that I had. So, And it is thick. Yeah, it is. It's it's. There's something to be said for the durability. Now, if, if you're not worried about crashing and things like that, then, you know, the other one might be the better option. Especially if you want lights. And, yes... Yeah, yeah. All of us can be a dirty dog from time to time. And she does have a hell of a sense of humor, no doubt about it, Dave. No doubt about it. Night, Captain Photon, Mr. Ricky. All right, guys, any other questions before I wrap this thing up? And yes, that may uh, be a double entendre. Yeah, I probably should have, Sasha. Probably should have. <laughs> Your dog, but you had a bath today. There you go, man. There you go. All right, guys, final call for questions about that sexy little guy. All good, Bravo. All good. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap this thing up. Thank you for joining us for this live unboxing tonight. Uh... I always enjoy these. Uh, it's fun to chat with you guys in this show as well as others. And, and of course, Bravo was was. Uh, yeah, never mind. I won't say that. I'll I'll save that for the the Discord this week to bust his balls. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And GB Linden, out. Night, guys. Appreciate it. Salute and the cheers. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Randy. And you better watch the rerun. Night Wild Bill Flynn. And thank you, Fred Barron. I, I hope you love the shirt. All of my, my merch, top quality, the best quality at the lowest price. The margin is almost nil. So 
I want everyone to enjoy. Thank you, William Regita. Glad you enjoyed it, brother. See you, Mickey. See you, Fred. See you, Bravo. Have a great night, guys. And GB Linden's out.